Good afternoon, NCAA men's basketball fans. You're here on the Trogcast, two really old guys talking sports. I'm Jeff Zink. I'm here with uh, Jim Reeker. And Jim, how you doing this week? Oh, pretty good. You know, it's uh, it's winter time. A little white stuff on the uh, ground this morning. So, but that means we're getting into the heart of NCAA basketball season here pretty soon. That's right. That's right. It won't be long before we get those conference games, and we'll talk about that in, in, in a week or two, about some of the conference predictions from things we talked about before. But uh, last week we talked a lot about the undefeateds, and it wasn't a, a great week for them. Uh, five more undefeateds go down. Um, you know, we'll talk about each of them in turn, which is this is only six left. We'll see who can win out with that. We both have a couple of dogs in that fight. Some of them not a big surprise. I mean, TCU, who wasn't even ranked, fell to SMU, kind of expected that. Two shockers were you know, Butler falling to Indiana State. Of course, then they bounced back to beat Cincinnati, but uh, Sycamores haven't been relevant in a while. And St. Mary's falling to the University of Texas Arlington. That's the first time they've ever beat a top 25 team. So let's talk about those two shockers first. Well, first of all, the uh, Butler game, that's an in-state game, and I'm sure that was a bus trip for Butler, probably about a two-hour hour ride. Um, and, again, I haven't looked at the Indiana State roster, but I'm sure they got some Hoosiers on there that can uh, play a little bit of ball. And that, of course, as we, we mentioned in our, our Razor cast the other day, was on Larry Bird's 60th birthday. So who knows if they were inhabiting the spirit of, of Larry back there on the, the Sycamore. But, but what about uh, you know, St. Mary's, who was one of the teams we thought might go the longest in being undefeated, or at least until they got to play Gonzaga, in January there, they fall to uh, you know, a Texas Arlington team that's on the rise. Well, it comes down to something we've talked about before. I think in this day and age, uh, it's just tough to go undefeated. And, again, we're in that time of year where we've talked about this on our broadcast before. They are student athletes, and most schools right now are either in their finals week or moving into their finals week. And so there's a lot of things going on. And you're dealing with 18- to 22-year-old kids for the most part who have a lot of other things going on in their lives. So I think it's hard to keep them focused. You know, I would, I would almost say by the middle of January, we won't have any undefeated teams. And, again, we've talked about it before. To go undefeated for an entire season, be a national championship, you'd have to win about 40 games in a row. And I think that's just almost impossible in this day and age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with you. I think it, it, it's going to surprise us at some point. You know, like somebody went in the, the horse uh, triple crown, which didn't happen for many, many years, and then almost happened two years in a row. But uh, Coach uh, Scott Cross has got him playing down there in Arlington, and who knows where they'll go from there. Now, the other two that, that dropped weren't all that big a surprise. I mean, South Carolina drops to Seton Hall. Um, but Seton Hall, you know, did win the, the Big East tournament last year they were third or fourth in the big east so you never know what's going to happen when you go up against them and then uh, of course the other one uh which is a heck of a game we'll talk about a little bit was notre dame and nova so we'll let you brag on your big east a little bit here and taking down one of the undefeateds i actually got a chance to watch the second half of that game which was just played last night and uh, saw that and wasn't too much into the monday night football game so i flipped over and watched pretty much the second half great game uh, went right down to the wire. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, tell you right now, Seton Hall is going to still be a power to be reckoned with in the Big East. They did lose uh, a player. Uh, I think his name, Isaiah Whitehead, went to the NBA. But they still got a couple of their key players back. And uh, that was a great game. In fact, uh, I don't know if you saw it or not. It came down to the end. Uh, Seton Hall had a two-point lead uh, shooting free throws. And... Um, With four seconds left, I believe, on the clock, he made the first one. He missed the second one. They actually grabbed the ball, threw it the entire length of the court. It went into the basket, rattled around, and popped out, although the announcers later said it probably wouldn't have counted because looking at the replay, it looked like the buzzer, the light had gone on before it left his hand. But it was an exciting game. And I had a lot of respect for South Carolina after watching that, you know, we talked about a couple of weeks ago that they don't really play that tough of a schedule. And actually the SEC is going to probably, it's not going to be quite as strong as 
some of yeah. the other Power Five conferences, Power Six conferences. But I was impressed. They played good defense. Of course, uh, that's Frank Martin coaching them of Kansas State uh, fame, and uh, he's done a good job there. They they play great defense. So I look for them to maybe do something in the SEC. And I don't know in that schedule if they play. I'm sure they play UK at least once, maybe twice. I'm not sure how that all plays out. But I could see them giving UK a game. Yeah. Yes, and then the big game of the week, and I don't know if you got to see any of this, was an exciting game, is, was Notre Dame versus Villanova. And, and Nova just able to pull away from them at the end. They, they did win by eight, but it was closer than that. And, God, what a game for, for Josh Hart. 37 points in 37 minutes. 10 for 14 from the, the floor, 3 for 4 from three-point, and Nova only got one other three-point bucket, as well as being 14 for 14 from the three-throw line and 11 rebounds. So Nova escapes, and it was scary there for a while. Notre Dame was up by four with about six minutes left to go, and then Nova was able to pull away. Yeah, I did get a chance. I was I was watching something else at the time. I was flipping back and forth, but I did see a good portion of that game. And, yeah, Josh Hart, he's just – Amazing. And what's really something to think about him is a lot of people don't see him as a great NBA player, but he's a great college player. And some people say he shouldn't be player of the year. But, you know, if you look at him, here's the key with Josh Hart. He scores points and does things when they need it. When you go back and look at Villanova's blowout, he usually only scores about 12 to 15 points. But they obviously needed him on Saturday against the Irish and uh, he put up, yeah, the 37 points, and his shooting percentage was great, and he was uh, perfect from the free throw line and, and had uh, double-digit rebounds. He just did what he needed to do to will that Villanova team into a victory. You know, I think a lot of people believe that Villanova is maybe not the best team in the country. You know, they don't have a lot of the top, top recruits, and, you know, everybody looks at UK and Kansas and North Carolina and Duke. But until somebody beats them, they are the number one team in the country. They are the defending champions. Another shout-out I would give coming out of that game is Mike Bray. What a job he does there. Uh, one of the criticisms I have of Mike Bray is I sometimes don't think he plays that tough of a non-conference schedule. So he builds up a lot of wins going into the conference schedule. Maybe that record looks a little bit better than they are. But he's been there, I think, for about 15 years now. And, uh, you know, you're talking about a place where obviously football is king. But they are always relevant. And remember last year, they uh, made a pretty deep run in the NCAA tournament. So I, I give a shout-out to Mike Bray. I think he does a great job. Again, he's not getting the, the top, top recruits, but he's getting some good players, and they're always a, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, that's true. And they're, they're, they're solidly in the, in the top 25 this week after that performance. And it just things we've talked about before. I mean, you know, I'm with you. I think there's some chinks there in, in Villanova. Um, you know, Notre Dame couldn't do it, but, you know, you get Josh Hart on an off night, and can the others step up? So we'll see. Right now they're undefeated, along with UCLA, Baylor, Gonzaga, Creighton, and USC. But like we've talked before, I think we're just looking at a, a an era of greater parity here in the NCAA. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of good players out there, and, again, it's uh, – it's a different world. There's so much travel that goes on and a lot expected of these student athletes these days. Yeah. Well, that means we can move into our next topic, which is, you know, the changes in the top 25, which are normally the top 11 teams. And, you know, we usually go by the AP poll. There, there was no movement whatsoever. Um, and a few teams got shuffled around. Uh, Florida State and USC snuck in on the back end as Florida and Iowa State who both lost twice, uh, um, drop out. Uh, but I guess the thing to point about me, and this has always gotten to me on, on the top 25, uh, just a couple of games. I mean, we talked about Nova and Notre Dame. Now, Notre Dame loses by eight in, in a good game at home against Villanova. They move up two spots. You know, South Carolina doesn't play. Of course, they're, they're going to pay for it next week. They don't play at all. They move up three spots. Cincinnati goes to a tough Butler squad coming off a loss. They lose on Butler's home turf by, by 10, and they drop two. Uh, it, it just gets me what I'm always talking about in the, these rankings. I mean, Butler was supposed to beat Cincinnati, so you expect that. But Cincinnati has to pay for it because they got another W 
I mean, another L on their uh, their record, and, and teams like that drop while a team like South Carolina doesn't even play gets moved up. And it's just something I don't know if you're going to address or not. But it's always sort of befuddled me about polls. Yeah, well, I don't think you could take polls to the exact uh, places, but I, I do believe, and you you said this. Uh, back when we started doing these broadcasts in uh, the middle of November, is it takes a while for things to shake out and teams to kind of find their spot and actually get uh, proper rankings. And I think we're pretty close to that right now. I think your top ten teams will, you know, if you look at the polls in another month or so, probably eight of the ten will still be there. And it's going to take, you know, now for a team to really go on a run, you know, to start moving up. And I don't – see any big jumps like remember how Baylor jumped I don't know what about 20 spots after they had that great week of uh, games and then uh, beat Xavier uh, on their home court and they you know a lot of people say they have the best resume in the country right now I don't think we're going to see movement like that anymore now it's it's kind of it's set and the movement's going to be you know very very static so I don't know what you think about that well I, I think it's a bold statement to say that eight of the ten will still be in the top ten in a month, especially with the, the schedules that they're playing, getting into conferencing. But, but I'm with you on the point that you just, uh, the, the, the top teams are there, um, and there'll probably be, there's going to be more movement on the back 10 as teams move up and down or slide as they get into their, their conference schedule. But the, the things you're looking at in the top 10, top 12, I mean, these are storied programs that have been around for a long time, and they're in good hands. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see you know, in a month where they are, because they'll be about three or four games into their conference schedule, and we'll go from there. Uh, big weekend on Saturday. It is, it is kind of quiet week. Either people are playing, uh, you know, not playing because of their exams or they're, they're playing week out of conference opponents. But Saturday is a big game for a couple things. One, in your home state of Indiana, we've got four Ranked teams going at each other. Butler goes to Bloomington to play IU. Butler coming in at 18 this week. IU at number nine. And then number 15, Purdue, um, who's coming off a couple of wins, uh, is going to travel to that Notre Dame squad that we just talked about. Yeah, the uh, Crossroads Classic, as they now call it, it, this is the sixth annual and it's a great event, especially when uh, Butler kind of moved into national prominence when they had back-to-back national runners up. You have four teams out of Indiana who are usually national players, and they have this little uh, doubleheader every year. And basically, uh, they, they kind of rotate the games. Uh, obviously, IU and Purdue never play each other in this because they play each other twice in the uh, Big Ten schedule. But I can't imagine what that ticket's going for. Yeah, you got four ranked teams in Indiana, you know, the heart of uh, uh, college basketball. A lot of people believe it's going to be played in what they now call Banker's Life Fieldhouse, which is the old Conseco Fieldhouse. It's not that old. It's where the Pacers play. You talk about a facility. They Actually, it's, it's a throwback to some of the old days, the way they built that. You walk into the building. It's got a, a neat atrium. You walk up to the ticket windows, which have the cages, kind of like the old baseball stadiums. It's a, it's a really neat place. Uh, again, if I, I think I told you earlier, if it wasn't for the Skip Prosser Classic this weekend at uh, Xavier, I might be headed to Indianapolis, but I don't know if I could afford the ticket. I bet there's a pretty good price going for that ticket because, again, you know, the holiday season, it'd just be – one of those uh, atmospheres that would be great to be in. Yeah, you can always get something on the street. You never know. You pick up something late. Just wait until right before tip-off when the, the scalpers on the street are getting rid of things. Either. So that would cause a little movement. It, it could be interesting. But, again, uh, just open for two good games there. And one of the other last showcases before we get into conference play is the, the now long-running CBS Sports Classics will be played in Las Vegas, and that's got number two UCLA playing uh, a still question mark Ohio State team, but they've been strong in the past. And then number six Kentucky is going to take on number seven uh, North Carolina. And here you're also looking at four fantastic coaches. You know, UNC's Roy Williams has got two championships at NC, and he also had runner-up finishes while his Kansas six trips to the Final Four. John Calipari has got his championship at UK, and he's taken 
you know, three teams to the Final Four. He's been in four of the last six. Bad Mata has two trips to the Final Four, including a runner-up a few years ago, and he's taken three teams to the tourney. And then Steve Alford, who's taken four teams to the NCAA tournament and, and won one as a player at IU. So what can we expect out in Las Vegas this weekend? Well, I hope to get to see UCLA play. I really haven't. I've just seen a little bit of them. Uh, and uh, the talk is that they are just a fun team to watch. They can get it up and down. They can score. I know you were a little bit uh, down on Steve Alford and UCLA after that subpar year they had uh, last year, but a lot of people were saying, hey, this might be one of the best UCLA teams in a long time, and a lot of them are starting to use those words, Final Four, National Champion, which, of course, they have several under uh, Coach Wooden back in the 60s, but there's a strong tradition there. So I hope to get to see them play. Important factor, I think, for UK is um, this is a – they got about three games left non-conference that are very big. This one against North Carolina, I think in the next week or so, they play Louisville. And then in the middle of uh, January, they're going to play Kansas. But if they don't win any of those three games, uh, because the SEC is so down and that's where the rest of their schedule is going to come from, I think it might be hard for them to get a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. So, again, not that they're not going to make the NCAA tournament. That's, you know, a given. But getting a top, top seeding, I think, is important that uh, UK wins one of these uh, games. Uh, North Carolina is down a little bit or, or dealing with the injury to Joel uh, Berry, their point guard. Uh, I guess he rolled his ankle and he didn't play against Tennessee and uh, NC struggled a little bit with Tennessee, but uh, they think he'll be back. So the, yeah, those, those should be two really good games. And I can't even imagine what that ticket costs out in Vegas. Yeah. That should be interesting. I mean, the, the four schools have 25 NCAA championships between them. And, and, and one of the notes there that you made, you know, like, SEC being down and Kentucky needing that. Uh, unfortunately, I think the same thing is going to hurt UCLA. The Pac-12 uh, doesn't look like it's going to be all that strong this year. Looks like Oregon would be tough and uh, got a couple others, but they haven't quite performed. But be interesting to see. I mean, I'm wishing the best for your Indiana boy, but like I say, the, the proof is in the pudding. So if they can continue to come through, it's going to be an exciting year out there in, in, in Pauley Pavilion again. And we'll be able to talk about all those games when we come back next week. And what, again, will be a quiet week leading up to, to Christmas. So we'll have a lot of time for that. Uh, anything else on your mind these days? Uh, I got a couple things for you. Uh, obviously, I got a, a little bit of trivia for you. We can't miss the trivia. I know you look forward to that every week. Uh, but a couple other things I want to mention uh, going back to Fort Wayne Mastodon, you know, the team of the year, the surprise team of the year. I called that on, what was that, November 10th? Uh, they currently are 8-3, and three, and they're starting to get into their conference play, and, I, and they're starting to roll. Uh, again, keep the Fort Wayne Mastodons in mind when it comes NCAA time. Actually, this Sunday they have their next game. A little trivia for you. I think you can get this one, but we'll see. I know you're good on your mascots, college mascots. But this Sunday the Mastodons play Stetson another classic uh, mascot. What is the Stetson mascot? Stetson, the, down in Florida? That's Stetson? Yeah. 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 Oh, come on. That is this is an easy one. one. Well, I don't memorize them like you do. I just watch them play. Um, Think about it. Stetson. Are they the hat? The hat turs. We'll give it to you. Yeah. Uh, the Stetson okay. Hatters. You come out with with things like the Mastodons, and I'm not going to tell Coach Drew in, in, in Baylor that you're picking Fort Wayne as the, the surprise team of the year over his Bears. I mean, but uh, you picked them I'm early. I'm telling you. With them. Uh, you got to like that. Okay. Um, I, and I have, I've, I've, you know, I called that, and then I called the uh, UCLA win over Kentucky. Nobody saw that coming. And these things just – are kind of channeling through me every once in a while. And, and one came to me this morning, a big upset I see coming maybe on Saturday. And then I thought, no, this can't happen. This won't happen. It just kept coming back. It's going to happen. Um, this is a team I saw down in Florida. I was very impressed with, very well coached. Got a couple Ohio uh, prep players on it. 
and that's the Davidson Wildcats. Of course, we all know who's the most famous player from Davidson. Steve Curry. Steph Curry. Steph Curry, right. Um, I'm going to call this one, and uh, I, again, I, I'm hesitant, but it, it just keeps sitting there. I, I saw him play. There's some factors involved here that they play Kansas Saturday night. Now, went back to one of my trivia. It's one of the toughest places to win, Fog Allen, right? I said, they, they can't win there. That's, but they're not playing at Fog Allen. This is actually a neutral site. They're playing in Kansas City, Missouri that night in a neutral site. Uh, again, it'll probably be a pro-Kansas. I'm sure it'll be a pro-Kansas. But uh, I like that team. They're very, very well coached. They played North Carolina last week and only uh, lost by single digits. And I, I'm going to call it right now the number three Kansas Jayhawks who have had a little problem there there was an incident with one of their top players this week and I think that might be a distraction so I'm going to call it the 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 Davidson Wildcats are going to upset the Kansas Jayhawks Saturday night and if you want to watch that game it's on ESPN 2 at 7 o'clock on Saturday night so tune in about 9 o'clock and and watch see if uh, Jimmy the Reek comes up with another one I was going to say, everybody, you're going to start betting on you. You're going to be careful. You might have to start calling the line. And that is a bold one, especially, yeah, they, they played UNC tough, but they just lost one to the College of Charleston earlier than that. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But I, I like how bold you are. Yeah, I got, I got something for you here that you might like. Cause it's, 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 okay. It's and you might know, between now and the end of the year, there are four coaches that have teams in the top 17, and that will help you limit it, who have a birthday between now and the beginning of the year. Oh, man. <laughs> and two of them two of them are in your favorite Big East. One of them you uh, got, one of them you got to get, Mr. Xavier. Chris Mack. Chris Mack's birthday is December 30th. So you got one. Okay, Perfect. and you said Big and East, that, top 17. That is... Kind of narrows it down. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm searching for a name here. Creighton's head coach. Uh, is, is that it? No. So that well, is, then, uh, um, how about, well, we'd have to go with Jay Wright. Jay Wright, who's a Christmas Eve baby, 1961, right about your age there, Bucky. Okay. Uh, all right, I got two two out of four. We've both done about the same in our life uh, accomplishments, right? He's won a national championship, and I've I've uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. You've called upsets from Fort Wayne and UCLA. So <laughs> we couldn't do that. All right, you said in the top seventeen, there's two others. The other two, I mean, hope they're they're both right now in the top ten in this week's top ten, and they Ooh, top 10. share a birthday. It's just nine years apart. Wow. One has uh, won the national champion. That'll help you narrow it but, down, too. Both have won a national championship? No, nope. one of the two has won a national championship. Uh, Dean Smith? The current coaches. Current coaches. Um, sorry, Roy Williams? Roy Williams, <laughs> that's a good guess, but no. John Calipari? Another good guess, but no. We'll take you up. Um, Bill Self and Mark Few both share December 27th as their birthday. Okay. Kansas and uh, Gonzaga. So, a couple little. Are you, go ahead. You ready for your trivia? Oh, okay. I thought, right, I thought the all, second uh, mascot was my trivia. No, that was just to get you warmed up. Okay. All right. The, no, and you know, I always try to work the trivia into something we've kind of talked about. And uh, we talked about UCLA, how well they're doing. Of course, Steve Alford's out there uh, coaching now and uh, possibility that he could win a national championship with this UCLA team, which would make him a player and coach as a national championship. Of course, he was at IU in 1987 when the Hoosiers won a national championship. So it got me to thinking – did a little research. Are there any other players, coaches who have won a national championship in both roles? And I found out there are actually three. So your trivia question today is, can you name any player coaches 
who have won a national championship as both first, obviously, a player and then a coach. Are any of them active? Are any of them active? And the answer to that is no. Yeah. Well, I believe the god of Indiana, Bobby Knight, is one of them. Did he not you are, a few in Indiana? He won a few at Indiana as a coach, and he was a role player on the OSU 19, only, Ohio State 1960 National Championship. So you got one. Get very good. Okay. Uh, the other two are probably a little bit tougher for you. I would think so. Are they pre-Bobby Knight or post-Bobby Knight at OSU? Uh, b- b- one would be both of them as players would, I believe, be pre-Bobby Knight. Um, I know that Coach Wooden won a championship at Purdue. I don't know if it was an NCAA. Is he in one of them? No, that's a very good guess. I believe he was on a Purdue team that might have won an NIT. Yeah, I think of this. And back then, the NIT was bigger than the the NCAA, but I know he won both. I'll give you a little hint. I don't know if, how much this will help you, but there's actually one, only one, who did it as a player and coach at the same school, and that's Big Blue a little bit south of us. Does that help you out a little bit? Oh, um, well, considering there, there are not many, I would think that that's either got to be Joe B. Hall or Adolph Rupp. It'd be Joe B. Hall. You are correct. He won it as a player at UK and then also, I believe, about 1978 with the Twin Towers. Uh, they won a national championship there. So very good. And the last one is a coaching legend. Uh, actually, I'll give you the schools. He was a player at Kansas and a coach at North Carolina. Hello? I'm there. You can't hear my brain rattling as I try to shake things loose. A player. Oh, I, thought that was, I thought that was Google. That was Google. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not on the computer. Uh, well, I am on the computer, but I'm not searching it. You said player at Kansas and coach at North Carolina? Correct. Uh, Roy Williams coached at those places but he played at North Carolina as a player, so he's out. Um, I mean, Fog Allen? Nope. No. He has a dome named after him. Dean Smith won both as a as player a pro- and a coach. That is correct. That is number three for you. Yeah. So uh, I'll give you about a, uh, I'll give you a B minus on that one. That's pretty good. Uh, Thank you, Coach. You're just too good. <laughs> you didn't expect me to get the first one right off the bat. That kind of sets you back. But always no, that's pretty good. Stated. Always love good. And just uh, to end us up here, a couple of nice dates in history. It's with uh, John Glenn passing this week. It's good to note that today was the last day that man had stepped on the moon as Harrison Schmidt and Eugene Cernan lifted off from Apollo 17 on, in 1972. And for basketball fans, not NCAA, but it'll take you back to 1982, the highest scoring game in NBA history. The Detroit Pistons beat the Denver Nuggets 186 to 184 in triple overtime. So, wow. Those people got their money's worth. Yeah. So we will uh, be back Tuesday of next week with our, our Trog cast. And those of you who like to listen, we will have our Xavier Razor cast this Thursday. Tune into both here and through the help of my good pastor. And, and until then, we'll say goodbye to Jim and hope that uh, you're all listening. And if we, we don't see you next week, everybody have a, a fantastic holiday. All right. We'll be talking about that uh, big uh, upset that I called. That will be our first topic next week. Uh, I'm, I'm writing them down here. Okay. All right. We'll see Thank you, Jeff. You. Bye.